So I posted this shot on Reddit the other day and I had a lot of questions about how I did it. Um, and so I think I'm going to run through that. I've never done a tutorial before, so if it sucks, then it sucks. Anyway, here we go. So this scene is, from an animation perspective, relatively simple. The blockade runner and the X-Wings are all parented to this empty called Rebels Control. Uh, and you can see there's only three keyframes for that. I basically just have it jump in uh, really quickly and then continue forward all the way to the end. We'll be on the end of the shot until it passes through the Star Destroyer, but we don't get that far. Um, so the reason I did that was so that I could very quickly just bring everything in, the X-Wings, the Tantive Four, all of that, just boom, right in there. Uh, and then I put additional keyframes on each of the X-Wings um, so that they sort of stagger their entrance. Uh, and then there's rotational keyframes for this one, for really all of them. And there's also keyframes for the uh, S-Foils locking into attack position. So I'd like to take a minute to talk about the way that I do uh, camera animation for this shot. Um, because it has this sort of handheld uh, look to it, but I don't start out with that. Uh, if you look at the scene from, from outside the camera view, there's actually two cameras in here. When I started it out, I just used a, just a normal camera uh, with a, an object that it's targeting. Uh, using the track two constraint, it just looks at this empty that I have a three keyframes on that allows me to then sort of position it as I go to point where I want it to point. And I do this, uh, this two camera sort of thing so that when I start the uh, project, it's just very simple. Let me grab the, this camera and show you how it started out. So this is basically the actual camera move. It's very simple. There's only two actual position keyframes for the camera so that I kind of come around the back of the X-Wing. When you look at it like this, it's pretty simple. It's kind of crude. And the handheld motion really adds a lot to it. And once I switch to, um, to that camera, it gives it a lot more life. Let me hide that other camera. And that's what gives it the kind of natural uh, real life feel. I'm over here in a new project um, just to show you how I set up the camera. Um, so basically what I did for that was I made an empty that I would use as the target for the camera. Uh, let's call that target. And if you use a track to constraint Point it at the target, negative Z, up axis Y. I don't know what any of that really means, but that's what works. And I can just set a couple of keyframes for location. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Look through the camera. No, it's kind of weird. I'm going to move the camera up uh, so that you can see the grid. There you go. So. Target moves, camera moves. Great. So that's how I set it up in the Star Wars project uh, so that I had a nice, simple sort of camera blocking. And then once I'm happy with that camera move, although you don't have to, you're not locked into that, um, what I'll do is I duplicate, just hit Shift D and then escape so that it stays where it is. And then I remove the track two constraint and reset its location, just zero everything out, location, rotation, and you get this weird nonsense. Uh, but then if you use a child of constraint, make it a child of the original camera, and as long as all of your stuff here, all of your position and your rotation is at zero, then it just defaults to its parent. And so then it follows that all along. But because this camera is set to follow this empty, 
you can't add the handheld motion the way I do in the graph editor because it's locked in its rotation to whatever this object is doing. You could probably put uh, a noise modifier on this object, have it move around, but that that's weird, and I don't want to do that. Um, so at this point, usually I'll hide the um, let me turn on the rest of these. I'll hide the original camera so that I'm only seeing this new camera. And in the view here, let me use a local camera. Set that to this one just so that I look through that when I hit zero. And then if you open up the graph editor, and this is a fairly well-known way to do um, sort of handheld motion. You set a rotational keyframe anywhere. doesn't matter. You're not going to use that. Hit N over here and go into the modifiers and go to Noise. And then that's on the X axis, and you'll see it goes all insane. Uh, but you set the scale of something, I don't know, 20. Usually I do is like 20 and 0.1 to start and see where that gets me. So you got a little bit of handle. It's a little, not quite what I'm, maybe 0.05, just to give it a little bit of that. Let's make the scale a little smaller. So yeah, maybe 20 was fine. So you do that for this axis, and then I just hit copy here, paste it onto the next axis, change the phase so that it's not exactly the same. Same thing with the next one, change the phase. And you can change these depending on what you want it to do. Um, but basically, you can see that's giving it a simple handheld motion. And that's basically all this camera does. It's just a shaking uh, camera that um, close this that is moved by this sort of parent camera. And then anything you want to do if you want to change the position of the camera, you grab that original camera and then you can move it. Let's do some keyframes real quick. Let's do some location. Uh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Look through the camera and so you have this positional change that automatically is inherited by the handheld camera. You can do the same thing by using an empty instead of this first camera. So you just make it a child of that and then move that around. But I like this more because it allows me to start with a camera. Everything I do starts with a camera. Uh, I come from a background of production and I'm always looking through the camera all the time. So yeah, that's how I set up uh, the handheld camera. This is not revolutionary stuff, just the way I like to do it. I'd also like to talk uh, really quickly about the TIE Fighters. Um, their animation is really pretty simple. If you look at the screen right one, the one that gets blown up, it just has six keyframes for position and rotation. Uh, once I decide you know, it's going to get hit in a certain frame, I think that's 1110 here, and it just rotates and spins right off the screen. And if you look at it outside the camera view, it's really, ooh, I'm upside down. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, it just spins off and then stops because we don't need it anymore. Uh, and I didn't do any dynamics or anything like that because it just didn't seem necessary. Um, and the other TIE Fighter is even simpler. Uh, that one just kind of moves in a straight line. Just straight on through. If you look at it from above, it follows the y-axis just straight through. If you look at it right there. Let's have a, yeah. Look at that. It even flies right past the ships that are shooting at it. Like nobody even seemed to notice that one. Whatever. It looks cool from the camera. And the the Star Destroyer is also really very simple. Uh, two keyframes just kind of slides into the shot. Um, it's just moving to kind of enhance the speed of the whole camera move without actually having to do a whole bunch of animation for the camera and all the other objects. And so from the camera's perspective, it looks like we're just moving quickly at it, but really it's a combination of we're moving at it and it's moving at us uh, to make it feel more cool and dangerous. 
So I did this whole thing just to kind of prove that I could do it. I had done some stuff like this in the past, but in uh, Cinema 4D before I got into Blender, and I'm still in the process of learning how to do things in Blender. And so I went to this thinking like, okay, I've done this kind of thing before. Let me see if I can do it as well or better than I did before. And I think I did. It, I think it looks kind of cool. Um, this is part one. I'm going to do another one soon just about the blasters. They're, they're a whole sort of complicated thing. That I feel like they need their own tutorial. Um, then I'll do one about the lighting, uh, rendering, and layer setup. And then uh, one for the compositing. So until then, thank you for watching.